Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clear Perspective. I'm Sung Lee. CNN seems to have met with bad luck recently. The famous hosts and the producers who created fake news in the past have resigned or been charged one after another. Chris Cuomo, former host of CNN's highest-rated show, was fired and is preparing to file a lawsuit against CNN. John Griffin, a veteran CNN producer who worked shoulder to shoulder with Chris Cuomo, has been indicted on charges of luring girls as young as seven years old to his Vermont ski house for sexual subservience training. Meanwhile. Fox News anchor Chris Wallace, who first announced Joe Biden's victory in Arizona on election night last November 3rd, has left Fox. He will join the CNN's streaming program. As you may remember, as the moderator of the first 2020 presidential debate, Chris Wallace was clearly biased towards Biden. So the debate became two on one, with Trump having to debate both Biden and Wallace. A year after the election, Wallace announced on his show Fox News Sunday on December 12 that it was his final show on Fox News. It was then reported that Wallace would be joining CNN. Fox News viewers mocked Wallace online for his joining the poorly rated CNN. In addition to media anchors, a movie actor who orchestrated and faked an attack on himself by MAGA supporters in 2019 has also suffered retribution. Last Thursday, the actor Jesse Smollett was found guilty on five of six counts of felony disorderly conduct for filing a false police report. He was sentenced to three years in prison. He reported to Chicago police in January 2019 that two masked men wearing MAGA hats attacked him on the street, and that they made various racial and anti-gay slurs. At that time, this news was taken up by the left media to attack Trump supporters. Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, and the others immediately tweeted in solidarity with Smollett. The first sentence of Pelosi's tweet said. The racist attack on Smollett was an insult to humanity. Meanwhile, Harris said Smollett was one of the nicest people, and that the attack was a modern-day lynching attempt. But they quietly deleted these tweets after the court sentenced him last week. According to the New York Post, ex-Chicago police chief Eddie Johnson said the subway sandwich Jesse Smollett was holding was the key to the case. Smollett told cops he'd been walking home with the subway sandwich at the time of the attack. However, the sandwich was still in good shape after the supposed beating. Johnson said this guy had the sandwich in his hand and it had never been touched. That was a real tipping point to us that something was amiss, and Jesse Smollett finally admitted that he had actually hired the two black men for three thousand five hundred to dress as white men and stage the attack. It is said that these two guys were very bad at acting, who wanders around with the noose and the bleach on a cold Chicago night. But the media at that time accepted Smollett's story in its entirety. Now the city of Chicago has announced that it will continue to sue Smollett for hundred and thirty thousand in investigation costs. The two black men hired by Smollett to stage the attack are also planning to sue him for defamation. The hoax Smollett directed was revealed, resulting in his reputation being shattered and leaving him alone to face imprisonment and the destruction of his career. Next, let's talk about Nicaragua breaks off diplomatic relations with Taiwan. The democracy summit to which the U.S. invited 110 countries shows that the international isolation of the Chinese Communist Party is an irreversible trend. The democracy summit is extremely humiliating for the CCP. The most notable part of the summit is, of course, the participation of Taiwan. During the summit, Taiwan's representative issued a national statement by video. 
The word national statement itself is powerful enough to raise the blood pressure of the CCP. Unable to prevent Taiwan from participating in the summit and with the Western countries boycotting the Winter Olympics, the CCP has once again played dirty. Nicaragua announced cutting its relationship with the Republic of China, Taiwan. Then just three hours later, it announced the establishment of the diplomatic relationship with the CCP. No one would believe that the CCP is not behind this. Nicaragua is a country in Central America with an area of 130,000 square kilometers, ranking 115th in the world. It has a population of more than 6.2 million people, with a GDP per capita of $1,877 in 2021. It is an undeveloped country. To maintain its relationship with Nicaragua in the past, Taiwan provided a lot of financial aid and major construction assistance. The most famous one is the 30 million donation Taiwan once made to help build a large baseball stadium. In 2019, the ROC Taiwan government provided a 100 million loan to improve livelihoods and infrastructure. Taiwan is the fifth largest export destination for Nicaragua, and this is the second time that Nicaragua has broken off diplomatic relations with the ROC government. The previous one occurred 36 years ago. It is very interesting to note that both occurred under the same Nicaraguan president, Ortega. Ortega was originally the leader of the leftist anti-government front. After gaining power in 1979, Ortega broke off 55 years of diplomatic relations with the Republic of China in December 1985 for the first time and recognized Beijing. In 1990, the new government came to power and Nicaragua again recognized the ROC. However, since Ortega came back to power in 2007, he has been arresting opposition leaders and dissidents. In the most recent election, he imprisoned all of his strong rivals and won the re-election. The United States, the European Union, Spain and other democratic countries condemned the re-election as a farce. Informed sources analyze that the Ortega government is under increased pressure from the economic sanctions of the democratic countries. That is why it approached dictatorial countries such as communist China. From this we can see what kind of people are close to the CCP. What we can conclude is that the CCP must have paid a lot of money to make Ortega so obedient. In addition, at the Democracy Summit, Secretary of State Blinken and Treasury Secretary Yellen both stressed the need to fight against transnational corruption. The U.S. State Department will establish the Global Anti-Corruption Coordinator, while the Treasury Department will establish an anti-corruption fund to reward those who can provide information about corrupt foreign leaders hiding their money in the United States. The Treasury Department's anti-corruption fund is particularly notable because it opens up a very effective and a quick way out for those in the CCP who are eager to get out but have no way to do so. This alone is enough to make many powerful people in the CCP mad. And the actual significance of the Democracy Summit is that it was the first time after World War II that the United States held a conference of a League of Nations. The conference not only has an agenda and a constitution, but also has the power for actual implementations. The U.S. has already announced sanctions against officials in Xinjiang. And recently, it imposed new sanctions against Shangtang Technology. On International Human Rights Day, December 10th, the U.S. Department of the Treasury announced that it would impose sanctions on four entities and individuals of the Chinese Communist Party involved in the persecution of Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Among them is Shang Technology, also named as Sense Time Group which is engaged in monitoring Xinjiang Uyghur. 
Under the sanction, U.S. individuals and companies will not be allowed to invest in Chinese company. If such sanction mechanisms are established and become permanent, and if such conferences are held annually, it could in fact become another large international coalition outside of the United Nations. The purpose is clear, to protect the world from the subversion of democracy by autocracy. It's meant to maintain the established world order. Therefore, the United States is actually trying to bypass the UN and establish a completely self-directed and more efficient international platform. Perhaps in the future, we will see this mechanism playing an increasingly important role in the Sino-US competition. The whole world would slowly get used to the dual system of the UN and Democracy Summit. Well, that's all for today. Please help us by subscribing, liking, and supporting this channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.